Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is meant by the term borderline rage? So this term borderline rage is a term we see in the popular culture. It's not a technical term that I'm aware of. For instance, I don't believe it's in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. But usually when we see this term borderline rage, it's referring to the anger that is oftentimes seen with borderline personality disorder. Specifically, one of the criterion in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual indicates inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. And I believe a lot of the times when we see this term borderline rage, it is referring to that. Even though when we think of rage, we think of a more primitive type of anger. I think one of the reasons is a lot of times with borderline personality disorder, the anger does appear to be more intense and more primal than we would see with somebody without borderline personality disorder. It's also important to note here that anger in borderline personality disorder is just one symptom. The problem is that it's the symptom that tends to get noticed first, or at least one of the symptoms that tends to get noticed early on. And that's because of the outward acting component of anger. It's easily observable. So we see all kinds of anger in borderline personality disorder. It's not a simple disorder, and anger expressed in borderline personality disorder is not simple. We see constant anger, so that's when somebody appears to be angry all the time. We see what I refer to as automatic anger, so this is anger that comes about without any stimuli, or at least without any stimuli that would normally provoke anger, so no apparent cause. We can also see triggered anger. That's anger that does have an apparent cause. So there's a stimuli that normally would produce anger, it's there, and then we see the anger come about. A lot of times the trigger has to do with a loved one that doesn't care enough or that seems to neglect the individual who has borderline personality disorder. Oftentimes abandonment is a theme in terms of being a trigger for this anger. Also, the threshold for the anger is set remarkably low, oftentimes with borderline personality disorder. So when we think of anger and borderline personality disorder, we are thinking that there is a different type of anger intensity, there is that lower threshold I mentioned, and there is extended duration. And all of these have been studied in the research, and it's not really clear from the findings if the anger is more intense, if the threshold is lower, if the duration is longer, or if some combination of those exist or all three of those exist. In my experience, certainly it seems like there is more intensity with the anger. I certainly believe the threshold is set too low, and I do believe the duration is usually longer too. There's a few other concepts though that I've observed with the anger and borderline personality disorder that don't tend to get covered as much in the literature, at least not the literature that I've read. One of them is the pervasiveness of the anger. So it's not just the low threshold, the intensity, or duration. The anger is pervasive. It affects every part of the person. It can also be internalized and externalized at the same time. Sometimes people view this as the anger just going one way or the other. Like the term quiet borderline often refers to symptoms including anger only being internalized. But in my experience, oftentimes, both internalization and externalization occur. Also, the anger and the response to the anger can trigger more anger. So there's a cyclic quality to anger and borderline personality disorder. One stimuli can occur that creates anger, and that particular angry event can trigger another, and that can move on and trigger anger for hours, days, weeks, so the anger seemingly has the ability to reproduce. Another element I see with the anger and borderline personality disorder is this concept of revenge. Revenge is oftentimes a product or a characteristic we see of the anger. So revenge against society, revenge against individuals who abandon the person with borderline personality disorder, but oftentimes some sort of vengeful motive. The anger we see in borderline personality disorder can be verbal, physical, passive-aggressive. Really, it can take on any form. And another 
thing I've seen with it is anger can come first and the narrative can be written afterward. And I think this is what happens quite a bit with borderline personality disorder, especially when the anger appears to be automatic or the trigger doesn't seem to be a trigger that would normally cause anger. So a person feels angry, they have all the physical reactions that come with that, and they want to make sense of it. So they look around the world and they fit the anger to a narrative. They create a narrative that makes sense to hold that anger. So this is consistent with anger that is irrational and doesn't quite fit with what's going on in the environment. And then we have the self-fulfilling prophecy facet of borderline personality disorder anger. And this is when somebody behaves in an angry way and they alienate somebody. And then they look at that alienation and become angry because of that alienation. So now it appears there's a legitimate reason to be angry because somebody is actually alienating them, abandoning them, rejecting them, not wanting to talk to them. So an individual with borderline personality disorder can tend to focus on that piece that seems legitimate where somebody is actually doing something negative toward them and forget that their own behavior caused that cycle. So we have, again, this self-fulfilling prophecy. The last component I'll talk about here with borderline personality disorder anger is lack of insight. And we hear this term a lot in mental health therapy, especially with personality disorders. And usually we hear it in the context of it's an obstacle. The lack of insight is an obstacle to recovering or fully recovering from borderline personality disorder or any number of personality disorders. Now the lack of insight we see with borderline personality disorder is oftentimes different than what we picture with like schizophrenia, for instance, anosognosia, this lack of awareness or lack of insight. That's where somebody doesn't believe they have a mental health disorder. And that's not uncommon with schizophrenia. In borderline personality disorder, it usually looks a little different. An individual with borderline personality disorder oftentimes recognizes that something isn't right, right? Some mood is dysregulated. They're angry. They're not happy. They feel empty. But they don't know what's causing it, and they tend to find reasons that could be causing it that aren't correct. And I mentioned this before when the anger is associated with a narrative that's not true. A narrative is created to fit that anger. So this lack of insight is really consistent with that theory of what happens in borderline personality disorder. So with borderline personality disorder, lack of insight is often a problem, but maybe not in the way that we would initially think when we compare it to other mental health disorders. I hope you found this description of borderline rage or borderline personality disorder anger to be interesting. Thanks for watching.